The next concept is at secondary and university level, perennialists were against reliance on textbooks and lectures in communicating ideas. Emphasis should be on teacher guided seminars where students and teachers engage in dialogue and uh, mutual inquiry sessions to enhance understanding of the great ideas and concepts and have stood the test of time. Students should learn to learn and not to be evaluated. See, the, the notion of evaluation is quite tricky here. You know, as they say, the water will find its own level, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So, when from, from a student's perspective, evaluation is the mother of all uh, innovation. Once you tell them what you're going to test them, they will innovate ways to achieve the best results through the evaluation. So they, they short circuit the entire learning experience. So one of the main uh, proponents from this body of or this, this, this notion of philosophy was by having lots of evaluation, then students may not fully engage in the entire learning experience because back in their mind is how I'll be tested, what I will be tested and rather than and, you know fully meaningfully participating. And then once again, it, it, it comes back to the original idea. They are not interested in surface knowledge. They are more interested in this dialogue and discourse. So, so for them, science is not uh, absorbing a body of knowledge. Science is participating in this process of inquiry. So, uh, so that's a major, major uh, issue to be, to be able to give credit to the perennialists. Okay. Uh, they also talk about universities should not only prepare students for specific careers, but to pursue knowledge for its own sake. University students may learn a few trees, a few trees, Prince claim, but many will be quite ignorant about the forest, the timeless philosophical questions. See, once again, maybe that's one of the reasons why we have, I mean, I'm brainstorming here, could this be the reason why we have so many unemployed graduates. Their, their training exposure is so narrow, so focused that if things do not work as planned, they don't know what else to do because they know trees, they don't know forests. You can't navigate through a forest just knowing and defining a few trees. To navigate yourself through the jungle of life, you need to have a bigger picture, a broader understanding of how things operate. Because the things that you have in your hand may fail. The instruments that you have in your hands may fail. But if you understand the mechanism of, of how mechanical, op mechanical objects work, then you can really immediately discard what you have in your hands and pick up something else. And thus gives you new tools to survive the jungle of life, I believe. Uh, the next notion, there's another two more. Let's go to the next motion. Teaching reasons using great books of Western writers is, ad, is advocated using Socratic method to discipline the minds of students. Emphasize, emphasis should be on scientific reasoning rather than uh, mere acquisition of facts. Teach science but not technology. Great ideas rather than vocational topics. So once again, this resonates the same thing. But however, I would like to say that uh, Western writers is not the only form of writers that, that I would acknowledge as great writers. Writers come from all traditions. It's just that unfortunately our textbook and, and the literatures that we are using uh, are from the West. Nevertheless, the West has a great role to play to our cultural advancement. It's a cornerstone of our entire civilization. But keep, uh, on the same note, I would like to expand that there are other cultures that have contributed to this great notion or field of education, one should never forget, uh, you know, there are numerous contributions from from a very uh, heterogeneous world. Okay, uh, once again, um, technology, once again, tech, if you, the focus is on technology, then, I mean, it's like, I have people, I know people studied IT, and they're unemployed, partly because the skills that they are learning, so it's, it's obsolete before even they graduate. So those who have learned uh, IT skills on the surface need to be retrained. On the other hand, those who have understood the science behind or the logic behind those sciences 
they just have to reinterpret the sciences because they're always relevant so see this is once again how the perennialists are handling this perennialists argue that the topic of great books described in society at time that the books are appropriate for the American society. Once again, I'm, I'm taking this from a book, so therefore the, the term American society appears. Students must learn to recognize controversies and disagreements in this book because they reflect real disagreement between persons. Students must think about the disagreement and reach a reason, defensible conclusion, a reasoned defensible conclusion. See, so once again, folks, education is real. It's not mathematics. I'm a mathematician myself. We don't have conflicts. If at all we have conflicts, it's oh, it's a conflict of assumption. You assume this problem is should be tackled from this perspective, and another mathematician will say oh, it's, it's this perspective. And once we straighten out the assumption, then mathematics itself is cut and dry. But in education, it's it's a multi-dimensional problem, and nothing is it's real. Nothing is absolutely true. Everyone has an element of truth, as just as the picture earlier talked about uh, the six blind men uh, approaching, discovering the truth of an elephant. So one big part of education from the perennialist argue, argument is you should expose your students to the tension within an argument. So, for example, if you take, uh, uh, if you are teaching social science uh, and the notion of uh, democracy is democracy. A good way to run a government. I mean, it would be naive to think that democracy is the perfect solution of organized gov organized government. Democracy is based on the participation of informed citizen. <coughs> so, if you have citizens that are not informed, how can democracy work? How would you vote if you are voting on on, on ignorance? So, for democracy to work, you have to have citizens that are informed. For information, for citizens to be informed then the channel of information must be there. Democracy works on counterpoints being exposed. So there is, then opposition is just as part of a government than the government itself because an opposition gives you critical feedback which should be uh, channeled through the information network through being informed to the citizens. So citizen makes this critical choice. A, there are two ways to argue this point, and I agree with both. However, I'm more convinced that this is part of the solution. So, simply saying, oh, democracy is a great way, and, and we all, all students should answer democratic, uh, a democratic parliament is a uh, government of choice, as opposed to a monarch or a, a theological, uh, theological, a theocratic government, it's really uh, flawed. The argument, the disagreements, the controversies must be recognized and brought forward and it, there should, students should be constantly engaged in this dialogue. And the final uh, template uh, for this uh, session is school should teach religious values and ethics or ethics. Uh -huh, in, in our case, probably they teach both. The difference of right and wrong should be emphasized so that students will have Def definite rules that uh, they must follow. See, uh, once again, this is resonating to their greater beliefs that there is a fixed body of knowledge. Uh, although they, they talk about uh, there's a fixed n notion of, of truth. And the closer you get to this fixed notion of truth, uh, the better it is. So I guess I've covered this this whole notion of perennialist. Uh, it, it, most importantly, you should be aware of the, the 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 uniqueness of this dimension, as opposed to the when I, I expose you to the other three dimensions. Okay, thank you very much.